Thank you all for coming tonight. We're very lucky to have Dr. Ibrahim Karim from Cairo, Egypt with us tonight. Dr. Karim gives very few public presentations and we're fortunate that he's here in Asheville for an annual event where he offers new information to advanced students in biogeometry. And I really appreciate the showing tonight of all the local people as well as the people that came from out of town. We at the Vesica Institute here in Asheville, North Carolina do sponsor biogeometry classes locally. And some of you here went to our foundation and advanced classes that were just a couple of weeks ago. And we'll have more coming up in the spring. What I want to start with tonight, Dr. Kareem has asked me to do a basic introduction to his work that will give you a sense of who Dr. Kareem is and some of the work that he's accomplished in over 40 years of intensive energetic research and new applications. So here on our first slide is our friend Dr. Kareem. And to start our discussion of Dr. Kareem's work, it's very helpful to start with an understanding that there was an incredible body of energetic research that began in the early 1900s in France. And in this French body of research, they were looking for ways that they could directly test various types of subtle energy qualities that they knew affected living beings, but that could not be detected by gross electromagnetic equipment. Now, the start of this particular French body of research actually came from public discussions by Jesuit trained French priests, where they were shown the way that they were taught how to test subtle energies using a Jesuit method that was taught to Jesuit missionaries. So they could go to other countries and they could test things such as, is this water drinkable or not? Or what plants are edible? Or what particular plants will be curative for particular types of illnesses? Once that Jesuit information began to be published in France in the early 1900s, we then had a increasing amount of research using these techniques that they called radiesthesia. Radiesthesia means sensitivity to or detection of subtle radiations. And one of the foremost people in the beginning of that field was a man named Louis Turin. Louis Turin was a radio engineer who taught the French military. He knew there are all kinds of invisible waves that surround us all the time that most people have no way to know of their presence. But they affect all living beings, but they cannot be picked up by, once again, gross electromagnetic equipment. So Louis Turin created a system of being able to find the complete spectrum of subtle radiations that affect all living beings. And he hoped that this would become an extension of modern physics. But because they used energetic tools that were outside the range of uh, modern physics, because they used the human energy field as a component of the testing, then it wasn't fully accepted by modern physics, but nonetheless a huge amount of research was done by the French where they could demonstrate that these subtle invisible radiations had very powerful effects on human health and human consciousness. By around 1933, they completed the vibrational spectrum. The vibrational spectrum that they created they gave the different bands in the spectrum names of colors, but they're not simply colors. Colors are one way that these energy qualities that affect living beings can show up. But it can also show up in other types of what we call in biogeometry quality scales. They can show up as different angles, or as different shapes, or as different sounds, or as different numbers, or as different proportions. They can show up in a variety of different qualitative methods and describing them in terms of color was just a simple way to describe this whole vibrational spectrum. And with this work, they discovered something called shape-caused waves. Shape-caused waves are the subtle radiations coming from geometric forms that affect living beings. And this is something not understood in modern science or medicine. But Dr. Kareem has been one of the leading people in modern times to demonstrate in scientific and medical research that these geometric forms do have profound effects on health human energy field, and human consciousness. So some of the research coming out from the French allowed them to use this vibrational spectrum that they had identified to be able to test all types of artifacts from the ancient world. And when you get into these today, I'm unfortunately fairly rare, French energetic texts from the 1930s and 40s, 
They go into detail about the particular bands of energy and sub-bands of subtle invisible energies that create very strong effects. So in this particular slide that you see here, this particular researcher was a Russian named Kerner Skariatin, known to the public as Enel. And what he's demonstrating here that living in Egypt and testing the Egyptian artifacts and sites actually on location, he was able to use the French system of testing energies and identify specific vibrational qualities that were present within the monuments in Egypt. In this particular case, he identified a particular powerful carrier wave of energy that had already been identified in its totality by French researchers. And this particular carrier wave of energy identified by the French was found to be able to penetrate thicknesses of lead that could not be penetrated by x-rays. And so the French and then later other researchers like Kerner Skariatin from Russia were able to identify the way that these particular vibrational qualities had been engineered into artifacts and sites throughout the ancient world by the initiated ancient builders. In this case, this particular sub-band of energy was at 6 degrees 15 minutes off of center within the geometric form of a pyramid. He called it the omega ray, or the pi ray. And as it turns out, the king's chamber is not in the exact center of the Great Pyramid. And the 6 degrees 15 minutes deflection allowed this ray within the Great Pyramid to strike directly on the sarcophagus inside the Great Pyramid itself. So this is to give you an idea of the type of research coming out of the French work, where they could identify specific subtle radiations and their effects. Now what Dr. Karim did that was very significant is that rather than looking at this complete spectrum of vibrations, which the French had identified, he asked a question that came out of a brilliant insight, a kind of lateral thinking. The French had identified that around the boundary of all objects, these 12 vibrational qualities will be formed in particular ways according to the geometric template of the object. What Dr. Karim asked, well, that's along the boundary of the object. What is the energy coming from the center of the shape? Because in many esoteric traditions, they talk about the importance of the center. The center is, as Dr. Karim himself will say, a transcendental gateway beyond space and time. And so he looked at what was the energy coming from the center. So if we have a drawn circle, as those of you who have taken the biogeometry training are aware of, we can actually test energetically the perimeter of the circle. And based on the compass directions, we will find all 12 different bands evenly spaced. But Dr. Karim then tested the center of the circle. And the center of any drawn circle, or anything where we have formed space into a particular configuration, the center of that will always have three specific vibrational components that Dr. Karim was the first to identify. These three vibrational components within the center of everything have the effect of balancing all living energy fields. And so in many of our healing systems today, including in conventional medicine, they use systems of polarity balancing. So that if your heart is overactive, they'll give you a pharmaceutical to sedate it. Or if it is underactive, they'll give you something to activate it. And the same thing is true in many type of esoteric traditions or alternative medicine. They try to push the energy back toward the center, which requires a very specific dose of the energy to try to get it back to center, but not push it off, balance the other direction. What Dr. Kareem discovered with this energy that we call the Biogeometry 3, or the BG3, which is the energy that is connected to the center, is that this will not push energy toward a polarity of activation or of sedation, but directly balances, perfectly balances, any living energy system. And so this was a great breakthrough in our energetic work, and again, a direct discovery of Dr. Kareem's. We identified all three specific vibrational components. With this, you can then test any type of living being, location, or even geometric forms. And with this, you get to the heart of what we often today call sacred geometry. But much of modern sacred geometry is somewhat abstract and intellectual. With Dr. Kareem's work, it becomes a directly applicable science. In the center of the circle, you find the BG3. And in drawn linear forms, you find the BG3 coming in at the perfect center point within the linear form itself. Now the BG3 
will manifest in a whole variety of different ways. Dr. Kareem found that the BG3 is manifested in a variety of different specific shapes. It can be manifested by different specific number patterns. Connecting to the center of any geometric form will give you the BG3. There's aspects related to rotation, specific angles, and even activities that are spiritual in nature like blessing and prayer. Why, when a person is in spiritual crisis, do particular traditions say to pray without ceasing? Because when a person is doing blessing and prayer, they're connecting to something that creates a strong emanation of this BG3 centering energy in their energy field. That's the healing power of prayer. So the BG3 is a universal principle of connecting to something transcendental. And by connecting to the center, again, it centers everything within the person when we connect to this energy. Now this is also very important in the architectural work done by Dr. Kareem because Dr. Kareem is an architect. And when you apply vibrational energies in architecture, you can't apply a lot of polarized energies because that might affect different people in a harmful way. It could be sedating or activating. But with the BG3 energy, it's the universal donor. It's the energy that connects directly to center and centers all living energy systems. In Dr. Kareem's research, he found that this BG3 energy, the centering energy quality, is found naturally in all chakras of the human body, acupuncture points of the body, cells of the body, and in what's called spiritual power spots in nature. Every major tradition on the planet has what they call local sacred spots or power spots. And if you go to test any of them, they all test with the BG3 energy quality identified by Dr. Kareem. So this is a very important aspect of the work. Sometimes Dr. Kareem will say that one part of biogeometry is the science of creating sacred power spots because they always have this particular beneficial balancing quality and using Dr. Kareem's biogeometry system, we can actually create this energy quality in any location. Now Dr. Kareem is a master of the shape caused wave. He's a master of understanding the energies that come from geometric forms as well as from many other things. So part of his work is called work with biosignatures. Biosignatures are linear diagrams that show movements of energy. And many of these biosignatures are linked to movements of energy within the human body and the human energy field. So what you find with this is that when the energy moves into particular locations in the human body, it will circulate in a specific pattern. Now the circulation of the energy in the body is known to many classical traditions. So for example, in Chinese medicine, they'll talk about the energy circulations in the body that will give us particular functions within the organ system and other aspects of the body itself. But what has not been identified before Dr. Kareem has found hundreds and hundreds of these specific patterns is what is the exact energy movement pattern inside the human body, inside the organs, and within the general human energy field that creates all the specific effects within all the health-giving principles of the body. And so with the discovery of biosignatures, we have specific geometric forms, originally three-dimensional movements of energy that can then be simplified down to a two-dimensional pattern. And so, for example, for the heart, there are many different energy circulations in the body that create these energetic functions or effects. And so you see here a variety of different biosignatures, originally, once again, three-dimensional, that show the way the energy will circulate within the heart, and every different energy circulation can be shown in this still form of the linear diagram. But when you see it, think of it as a dynamic energy movement pattern. The energy is constantly moving within this pattern, within the body or the organ, to create different functions within the organ. So every different biosignature for the heart, for example, creates a different function of the heart. One might be connected to keeping the beat of the heart. Another might be connected to the filtration of the blood. They all do different things. And again, at this point, Dr. Kareem has found hundreds and hundreds of these over the last 30 or 40 years of intensive research. With this, he is then able to identify different types of ways that energy moves within shapes and what the functions of them are. So for example, if you look at his remarkable book, which is his first book in English that we have here, which is called Back to a Future for Mankind, he has diagrams like this. This is the shape analysis of the geometric shape of the womb and the woman's body. And this is connected to particular types of biosignature movements, some of which are connected to forms that we find in the ancient world. And this particular one 
the shape connected to the form of the female womb and to this type of biosignature movement is actually connected to a kind of anti-gravity effect. It helps the weight of the child to be suspended within the body. So a lot of this is connected to physiological functions, but it can also go into very esoteric levels as well. In previous years, we've asked Dr. Kareem to come and speak on different topics, including his environmental research and on different uh, health aspects of his work. And this year, we asked him to speak on the spiritual and vibrational sciences of Egypt from ancient times into modern times. So he will be getting into more of those esoteric aspects tonight. To give you just a brief overview of some of the successful projects that Dr. Kareem has been a part of, Dr. Kareem began his public exposure in the 1990s with a series of projects at the Egyptian National Research Center. And to make a long story short, they basically asked him to affect the life functions in living beings through pure geometric forms. Now, according to modern scientific and medical theory, it should not be possible for a simple geometric form to affect the life functions in a human body. There is no mechanism for that understood in modern science but it's something that you find indicated in many classical traditions and is connected to many classical healing systems. So Dr. Kareem was challenged, for example, to have two Petri dishes with different fast replicating cell cultures and leave one alone. And in the second cell culture, he was to put a simple geometric form over it or next to it that would kill all of the uh, biological life in the second Petri dish. And as an indicator of the type of person Dr. Kareem is, he says, biogeometry is not for killing, and I'm not going to kill anything. But what I will do is I will put a simple geometric form over this Petri dish, and I will completely paralyze all life activity. I'll put in suspended animation everything in that Petri dish. That's exactly what he did. And this is the report from the National Research Center of Egypt, written by the head of the Department of Microbial Chemistry indicating the success of the first experiments and that they could not explain how a geometric form could affect life functions to that level. Dr. Kareem then continued to work for them for an extended period of time. He was the head of a research project started at the National Research Center in which he uh, showed them uh, many different fascinating applications of this power of the shape caused wave to affect living beings. This then led to his participation in the National Hepatitis C Research Project and in this particular research project, they were examining all <coughs> mainstream and alternative methods for helping treat hepatitis C, which was epidemic in North Africa. And in Dr. Kareem's group, he said, I don't need to meet anybody in the group. I'm simply going to find the biosignatures that will be of assistance for the body to strengthen itself in the midst of this particular challenge, because biogeometry doesn't kill anything. And he then put a series of biosignatures first on the particular form that you see at the top left, a very early form of what we have today as the biosignature medallion. And what you see at the top right is the latest version of the biosignature medallion, something that could be worn on the body that has the biosignatures and gives the energy to the energy field. Just from wearing this particular early form of the medallion, Dr. Kareem essentially won the first stage of the Egyptian National Hepatitis C Research Project. After the end of the first stage, the people wearing his medallions, which were given to 300 persons, had a 90% normalization of their enzyme levels, which was much higher than what came in second best, which was interferon, and had none of the toxic effects of the interferon. The results of this project were announced on Egyptian national television. Also, some people simply from wearing this particular medallion reported on national television and showed their blood work that they had complete viral clearance and there was no more hep C in their blood. Not all people got complete clearance, but everybody improved. When we asked Dr. Kareem how come some improved, well, others got complete viral clearance. He said, because all we did was have them wear these forms on the body. If we wanted to get a more uniform result across everyone, we'd also need to energy balance the energy where they live, the energy balance the location, because that's also something very fundamental and important. Dr. Kareem has then done a huge number of projects, not just with human beings. And Dr. Kareem himself is not a medical doctor. He makes no medical claims. He always allows the medical doctors in the project themselves to announce the results. He's also done projects with animals and with plants. This is one that was done in Egypt with a, a chick farm. 
and through creating strong BG3 concentrations within the farm, they could get better growth and much better health in the chickens than they actually got by using growth hormones and antibiotics. They use no antibiotics and no growth hormones. In this particular representative example of one of Dr. Kareem's many plant projects, he did this in association with an agricultural university in Holland. And he created particular types of biogeometrical forms that are illustrated, sorry, on this part, bottom left-hand side of the slide. They have particular angles associated with them, or they have to do with particular vibrations that are put at a particular angle around the field, what's known as color and object balancing in biogeometry. So they had two groups of apples grown at exactly the same time. One was grown with artificial fertilizer, and with pesticides to keep the pest away. The other had no pesticides, no artificial fertilizer, simply created strong BG3 concentrations around the apples. They were then picked at the same time, and after being kept for a month in a heated apartment, you can see that the ones at the bottom left that were conventionally grown are already, already rotting. But the ones at the bottom right are still fine after a month in a heated apartment. So what Dr. Kareem basically was able to illustrate in this particular project is that by creating strong concentrations of this energy quality, this energy field, around the apples while they were growing, he could get the effect of preserving the apples for a longer time. They would have a higher <coughs> nutrient count, they would have no pesticide on them, and no artificial fertilizer would be required. Now today we're being told that we need to irradiate our food supply so that the uh, Vegetables and fruits will last longer for the grocers, but Dr. Cream has already demonstrated that you can increase the life force inside of the produce and it'll last for much longer without killing the life force through external radiation. And again, this is just one example of a huge number of projects that Dr. Kareem has done. In another fascinating project that was done off the Red Sea, he uh, was asked by an engineer if there was some way that they could grow crops in salt water. And Dr. Cream said, I don't know, but I'm willing to, to try it, see what happens. And so he simply ran the salt water coming from the Red Sea through particular shapes and angles that would concentrate this BG3 energy quality and infuse it into the water. Then that BG3 infused water would be used to uh, water the sweet potatoes that were growing and the sweet potatoes themselves held within a container that concentrated BG3 around the growing sweet potatoes. So they had sweet potatoes that were grown normally using fresh water, and they grew normally. Those that were given salt water straight from the Red Sea didn't really grow at all, as you would expect. But using salt water straight from the Red Sea that had not had any salt taken out, but simply had, had added to it this BG3 energy quality, they actually grew as well or better than the ones that were grown using the fresh water. And so this is a remarkable demonstration of what can be done with these types of energetic applications that Dr. Kareem is a real master of. And it indicates that it's possible even potentially to do things like irrigate with salt water. It seems to indicate that these energetic qualities are actually primary over the chemical constituents. In another project that Dr. Kareem uh, did with the Egyptian National Research Center, they were testing, is it possible to use this type of beneficial energy field to protect living beings from toxic radiation, even nuclear radiation? For that, they built a series of different cages. And the cages were built with radioactive materials. And mice were kept within the cages. Those that were kept within the, the radioactive cages with no other applications all began to develop cancerous tumors, as you would expect. But mice within the exact same type of radioactive cages that simply had some of Dr. Kareem's BG3 generating forms near the cage, like this biogeometry cube, as Dr. Kareem calls it, simply having that in the same area. The mice within these particular cages were healthy with no signs of tumors. So again, this seems to indicate the power of this particular type of vibrational application of these types of energetic fields. Dr. Kareem has also applied this to mainstream work in electromagnetic fields because many people today are becoming highly electrosensitive. We have such a constantly increasing intensity of electromagnetic fields around us. Some people are beginning to become like canaries in a coal mine and they cannot be around strong electromagnetic fields. This is a growing problem. Dr. Kareem did a project in Switzerland 
in Hamburg, Switzerland, where he was able to neutralize electrostress through the entire town in Switzerland using various types of non-electronic devices based on geometric shape like the one that you see him holding here in the bottom illustration. These shapes can be applied at any level from a particular appliance to a person's entire house with what Dr. Kareem has developed that he calls the home kit, or they can be applied in large industrial applications like what we see at the top right where they can actually be applied to power generating plants themselves. Dr. Kareem is also very aware of a phenomenon that is best known in Central Europe and particularly around Germany and Austria, which is geopathic energy grids. These are particular lines of energy that run through the earth that have toxic radiation. And in the German research, they've identified the way that these particular lines of toxic energy running through the earth can be connected to all types of human health problems and particularly have been implicated in the German and Austrian studies with cancer. But they can lead to a variety of different problems in the human being. And so what you see in this particular illustration is when these multiple geopathic lines cross at the point of where you have the tree here, you then have something like cancerous tumors created on the tree. And again, this is very well known in Germany, but not as well known in North America. So if you take a look at the top right illustration here, the problem that we have is that these types of toxic earth energy lines will run in a constant pattern all over the earth's surface. Now in the ancient world, they knew about this, and you can find references to these types of earth energy lines in all types of classical traditions. But in earlier times, these lines were not as toxic as they are today. They will actually conduct the toxicity from our electromagnetic field technology that we've developed in just the last hundred years through these earth energy lines, making them far more toxic. And then leading to the problem, having these lines running through your home, and if you're sleeping, as the Germans have found, over crossings of those earth energy lines where the energy is intensified, it can lead to very serious health problems for people. And again, in North America, most people are not even aware of this phenomenon. Dr. Kareem, once again, has solutions for this that he's developed with his knowledge of the shape-caused wave and of biogeometric energies that can be applied to anything from a single Earth energy line to forms that can actually be placed in the Earth and affect very large areas. Now, this is part of a much older spiritual science that had to do with the master builders' guilds all over the world. And so, in this particular illustration from Dr. Kareem, it illustrates the way that in ancient times, they would actually look for the crossings of the powerful earth energy lines as the locations to place all sacred buildings. And in the ancient world, they would always look for these particular power spots, the BG3 power spots that we described before, as the place to build a sacred site. You will not find sites like this built in the ancient world that are not built on BG3 power spots. In the ancient world, they knew that was where they had to locate any type of spiritual center, any type of temple. And this carried on into modern times until it was primarily lost over the last few hundred years. Up until that time, it was carried within closed guilds, like Masonic guilds of operative masons in Europe and the master builders of India and China and Egypt and other countries like that. And so this shows the way that this particular church in Germany when it's analyzed for the earth line crossings, is built so that the central earth line goes right through the central axis of the building, and that the focus of the altar is where multiple lines are crossing in the altar location of the building. Dr. Kareem has done quite a bit of his own research with this all over the world. This is his analysis of uh, explaining what it was a mystery in Egypt of why was one of the most famous mosques in Egypt the Sultan Hassoun Mosque in Cairo, built with a shift in its axis. So in the bottom left, you see the way that there's a shift in the axis of this particular building. Dr. Kareem tested and found these very large energy lines that the builders of this particular temple were aware of that then give you the demarcation for the axis shift that took place within the building. Dr. Kareem has done a tremendous amount of this type of work, including at Giza Plateau. Dr. Kareem has done his own original survey with his knowledge of BG3 energy lines at Giza Plateau. And so at the top, you see the picture of how Giza Plateau looks from the air. And beneath it, Dr. Kareem's map of the BG3 energy lines, which are not detrimental lines in this case, but they're running beneficial energy, which is why they built the pyramids on the sacred power spot. 
and he's showing the major concentrations and the placement of the lines at Giza Plateau. Now, this is part of a much larger body of work from Dr. Karim, where he's been working to bring back into the modern world the classical knowledge known to the ancient guilds and lost for a very long period of time of how we test the earth energies, how we build in coordination with the earth energy, so the buildings we build are like living organs in a living body coming out of the earth's own energy, and then how we connect it to celestial sources. Again, this was a classical form of energetically connected building in the ancient world. And so there have been various speculative texts talking about the orientation of the pyramids at Giza Plateau and the shafts within the pyramid and what they're pointing toward in connection to particular types of locations in the heavens. But Dr. Karim has an advantage that these other speculative texts don't have, which is that Dr. Karim can directly test the energetics of the locations in the heavens because the Egyptian priests built all their things on energetic principles. They had a highly advanced energetic temple science. And so through testing, Dr. Karim could actually identify where the shafts were oriented toward to particular locations of extremely high BG3 energy in the sky. And the difference between Dr. Karim's model and that you find from many other speculative texts is that Dr. Karim can actually identify, once again, these BG3 power spots in the sky the same way as it was done in the ancient world, finding them on the ground as places to build the temple. And those BG3 power spots in the sky may not be associated with a visible star. Because you'll find in all the other speculative texts, they'll talk about the way that this is aligned toward the star Sirius, or this shaft is aligned toward Orion, or something of that kind. But actually, some of the strongest BG3 power spots, like Dr. Karim has shown an outline at the top part of the illustration, are in dark areas of the sky. And the indication related to Orion or Sirius may not be to the actual visible star, because there's more BG3 in a local area close to the star, but it's not the star itself. And so Dr. Karim has managed to do original analysis of this and to rediscover the secrets of how this is done and to create a truly modern system for how this type of energetically connected work could be done in the modern day. There are all kinds of deeper levels of biogeometry that we get into in the biogeometry advanced training and that Dr. Karim offers to us when he comes for these annual special topics courses for graduates of the Biogeometry Foundation and advanced trainings. This shows some of the very important parts of the advanced type of energy analysis work that Dr. Karim has developed in biogeometry. Rather than just testing energy at the physical level, virtually every classical tradition on the planet understands that there are multiple levels. Now these may be called spiritual planes, they may be called planes of nature, they may be called dimensional levels. It depends on what the tradition is, what they might term it. But whether you're in India or you're in China or you're in the Western Hermetic tradition, they know about all these different levels. So you have to analyze the energy on all these different levels to truly know what's happening. So at the left-hand side of the illustration is Dr. Karim's work showing that there are particular geometric forms that create resonance with different planes of nature. We have the physical plane, we have the vitality plane, which is called chi, ki, or prana in the East. You have the emotional or astral plane, you have the mental, and then you have three higher spiritual planes beyond that that have different names and different traditions. Every one of them is connected to a particular type of geometric form that can allow you to create resonance with that particular plane. Resonance is creating an exchange of energy and information between two things of a similar vibrational quality. And so with this particular system of the resonance of the shapes to the planes, you notice that many of these types of shapes were found in the ancient Egyptian temple science. So for example, at what's called here spiritual two level, it's the form that was represented around the temples as the obelisk form. The form at spiritual one is connected to the form of a grail cup. The form for the mental level are the stacked disks that you see in all types of ancient Egyptian forms like the jed pillar. The form for the emotional or astral plane is connected to the form of the pyramid or the hemisphere. In ancient forms of sacred architecture, they would create the pyramid as the place of spiritual initiation. And in more modern times, once the Greeks figured out how to make freestanding domes, they now create domes over temples, synagogues, mosques, etc. because of the resonance and the shape-caused wave of energy that gets emanated from it. So this becomes a system that we use in advanced biogeometry to be able to test the energy at any level or to direct the energy to any level. 
Now there's deeper levels of this where Dr. Kareem, for example, at the top right, was able to identify that all of these planes interact with the physical world through particular angles. So it's in the cross of the physical world, as you see at the top right with the dark lines, that we have the physical plane. That's why we define our physical world as a three-dimensional world. There are three 90-degree shifts in our physical world and that becomes the 390 degree shifts of the physical plane. And our electromagnetic energies are also connected to the physical because the electrical component and the magnetic component in electromagnetics are at 90 degree right angles as well. But between them, we actually have, and Dr. Kareem can demonstrate this in his advanced work, at specific angles you have all the other planes coming in at particular angles. It's one of the things hidden behind how he can get such powerful energetic effects from some of the shapes that he uses. Because why can a geometric form create these powerful energetic effects on living beings? It has multiple levels of the specific vibration it creates and the function that has, but also in some cases the plane it taps in according to angles and things of that kind. This can then be applied for very advanced purposes, such as at the bottom right, Dr. Kareem developed a system where knowing what these particular angles are of the different planes, you could take a vibrational sample of a person and you can actually trace out their extent of evolution of their own development on every one of the different planes. And based on the level of their development at the physical or vitality or emotional etc. levels, you get different types of mandala forms of the development of their energetic field, like you see here at the bottom right. So this ability to test on the, all the different planes of nature is very significant in the work of biogeometry. So we can test specific energy qualities and differentiate them one from another in a way that simply does not exist in any other system today, but in Dr. Kareem's biogeometry system. And we can then differentiate all those energies at all the different plane levels. Now, one of the very fascinating projects that Dr. Kareem has done, he's friends with Dr. Masura Emoto, as you see at the top right. And so with Emoto's system of creating water crystallization pictures, simply by having, I'm sorry, the projector is doing this on its own. At the top left is another biogeometry cube. And simply by having it in the same room as the water they're making the crystals from, they then were able to create these beautiful crystallizations in the water. So bottom left is the standard tap water. And then bottom right are the type of crystallizations that come just by having the BG cube in the same space. It's the effect of the radiation of the BG cube, the BG3 energy, to structure the water. And so many people know about the work of Masuro Emoto. But what they may not be aware of are other systems of water imaging. So we're very fortunate that when Dr. Kareem comes to teach these special topics classes for advanced biogeometry students, here in Asheville every year, he will also bring special guests with him. This year, for example, he's brought a remarkable gentleman from Europe whose name is Georg Gaup Berghausen. His name here is at the top. And Georg has his own system of water imaging. In fact, Georg Gaup's uh, son, Erasmus, is in charge of Masuro Emoto's water crystallization laboratory in Western Europe. But Georg Gaup himself has created his own imaging system that does tremendously high magnification of structures in water. And with it, he can show incredible things. He has a book about water research with information that no one in North America knows anything about, but it's only in German. And we're working with him now to translate that information and make available all the illustrations and concepts in English at this time. Now at the top left, the illustration here from Georg's work shows the effect when water is exposed to cell phone radiation. And so with this extremely high magnification, you can see the effect on the structure of the water. That does not look very appetizing. But when that same cell phone affected water is then harmonized, simply in the same energy field as the BG3 energy that Dr. Kareem identified, you can see at the two bottom illustrations the change in its structure. That's a huge change in structure. And it really shows you the way that these BG3 energies change the vibrational components of anything they are exposed to. Georg Galp has also done work with particular samples from the human body. So he's done this with blood, with saliva, etc. And so what you see at the top, the top three pictures are samples of 
saliva before a person has used a cell phone. And if you like look at the pictures at the, the very top, you see that the saliva has a structure that's almost like marine life. It's like plant forms, this beautiful plant vein form. It's very structured in a natural, organic way. But look at the ones directly beneath it, the middle three pictures, the second row down. And look at what's happened to that structure. It's become this type of static lines. And you've lost that beautiful organic form that you had to begin with. You can see the derangement of the energetic pattern when it, the saliva in the human body is exposed to the cell phone radiation. But the four pictures at the very bottom show you the saliva pictures after the uh, exposure of the person to a BG3 energy field after they've been exposed to the cell phone. And once again, you can see the restoration of a pattern. And some of these are quite remarkable. Remember that Dr. Kareem's work is connected to the energy of the center. And look at the powerful centering that appears in some of these at the bottom four pictures. So Georg Galp's work, and again, we're very uh, honored to have him join us uh, for the special topics class for the advanced students here, can really demonstrate visually the change in the energetic effects. Georg Galp is also a retired professor of music. He's deeply connected to Sufi musicians all over Europe. And so he's worked with his friend, Dr. Karim, on creating various types of new musical instruments that will create incredibly powerful harmonizing energies anytime the musical instrument is played, like the one that's shown here by Dr. Karim. Also, they have created extremely large musical instruments big enough that you can be inside of it while it's being played, and your entire energy field will be affected by it. Did you bring one? I didn't bring one of those, sorry. <laughs> And working with sound, Dr. Kareem also offered to us, and we have it in the Biogeometry Advanced Training, the kinds of concepts that you have from ancient Egypt of what was called the hekau, or the sounds of power, where there are particular types of sounds that will activate the energy centers of the human body. And some of this is connected directly to the ancient Egyptian mysteries. And so this is one of the handouts we have from the advanced training showing the particular sounds that will activate the three centers above the head seven centers within the body, what we think of as the seven chakras, and then the three below the body. Now, Dr. Kareem is the kind of person that has done so many incredible things. I, once again, I could never begin to summarize a, a very small amount of all the work that he's done. And it's somewhat almost like uh, Indiana Jones with all the things he's done all over the world that sometimes you don't really hear anything about. So one time, just in passing, he talked about, oh yes, and then I went out with some people and we discovered the 12 lost uh, springs that Moses found during the Exodus. And so this is just like one of the things that kind of comes out in random conversation with Dr. Kareem, like, oh yeah, we found the hidden wells of Moses. And this is the illustrations of them finding the uh, particular springs, 12 springs that are described that Moses found with his staff. And they actually found them and excavated them at that particular time. And Dr. Kareem has taken this type of work very, very far when one of the most amazing things that he's discovered is that he spent years analyzing the energetics, actually testing the energy points and emanations of many different Egyptian temple walls and statues. And so with this particular type of testing, he was able to find that there was a hidden grid pattern that was used that's behind the Egyptian statues that we see from ancient Egypt and the illustrations on the Egyptian temple walls. Remember that the illustrations on the Egyptian temple walls were not something for the general public to see. The general public never went into these ancient Egyptian temples. It was just for the initiates. They were there for an initiatory purpose. And the Egyptologists today know that there is a type of hidden grid that was used to design the illustrations on the Egyptian temple walls. They have no idea of the energetic principle behind it. And so one of the core grids is a 19 level grid. And 19 is a number that when used appropriately is a very strong BG3 generator. And so over time, Dr. Green was able to identify the way that in ancient Egypt, they could create a two dimensional image or a three dimensional form that had the same energy quality as a human being in prayer. So it would actually emanate extremely strong energies. And with Dr. Kareem's work, he was then able to abstract out the original form of the grid. He was able to recreate it. And that's what you see on the right-hand side here. We call it the human archetype ruler, because this is actually the grid pattern 
This is a two-dimensional projection, but in three dimensions, it becomes the actual geometric template of the human being at an extremely high spiritual level. We created a large version of it here to use during the special topics class for everyone in the class to see. And the thing about this particular pattern is we can use it as an advanced type of energetic ruler. You can put samples at the bottom egg form here, and then you can test it for 10 different quality levels of BG3. Not just presence or absence of BG3, but for 10 different quality levels, and then add other things to it where you can test on every quality level on every separate plane of nature. It allows us to take a type of energetic x-ray of any person, place, or thing, and know exactly what its energetic structure is, or what things can be added to that person, place, or thing to balance problems in the energetic structure. And so this particular rediscovery of the human archetype code is something we can use for practical purposes. And Dr. Kareem has also demonstrated to us, particularly when he came last year. Last year for special topics, he went into great detail for two days about the use of this ruler. And he showed us that by placing a horizontal axis at a precise point on this particular ruler, it turns the ruler from something that you use to test energy to something that projects energy extremely strongly outward and can balance energy within human beings and environments when the horizontal axis is added to it.